Hitler invaded Poland in 1939. And it was a case where, I don't know, you just got sort of a gut feeling that something's happening. And instead of going on to college, which I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a very, uh, I wasn't uh, the brightest one in the class, uh, Bob Dowlin and I decided we were going to uh, join the Marines. And um, we didn't think they would take us because um, we thought they wanted the perfect specimen. Well, the, um, in 10 days, they said, uh, you will be in San Diego. And that sounded exciting. We thought we were in paradise. Palm trees and um, a beautiful, beautiful sunshine. And we were given a dime. When you get to the, when you get off the train on Broadway, you go to the corner, you get on a bus, and they gave us a dime. Paid for everything from here to there, plus a dime. And um, they asked us uh, for the bus to take us to the Marine base. So as we're busing along this, this, these beautiful, this beautiful boulevard, all these palm trees and so on, and next thing you know, we were, uh, we were at um, MCRD, the Marine Corps Recruit Depot. <laughs> what was that like when you get off the bus and suddenly you're there? I don't want to say we went from heaven to hell, but it was, um, I don't know how else to describe it. It was the it was the old core, and um, it um, I've heard it's different today. But in, in those days, we um, it was before Pearl Harbor, and we um, and um, we we're wondering what we got ourselves into. But when it came graduation time, we felt very proud and very happy uh, to be uh, what we were. Uh, unbeknown to us, we had, when Pearl Harbor hit, um, we were going to school, and they, uh, we were in school for a short time, and they pulled some of us Marines out of school. It was primarily Navy, but they pulled some of us Marines out, and um, they sent us over to Eva, um, Hawaii, which is uh, about 20 miles outside of Honolulu. It was formerly a blimp base by, uh, by, apparently the Navy lost a couple of blimps in storms and so on. And so they uh, discontinued that particular branch of the Navy and um, a Marine fighter squadron was uh, originated there. It became a Marine base. And the next thing I know, instead of being radio, being trained in radio and gunnery, I'm uh, I'm working on an aircraft on the on the Brewster Buffalo. Uh, it was a, a clumsy, awkward. Uh, I think one of the dumbest aircraft that the the Navy ever um, uh, ever allowed a, a pilot to get into. But we were removing the um, tanks, gasoline tanks, and installing bulletproof tanks, self-sealing. And so that gave me a lot of insight to aircraft, which, um, I, again, you do, you do what you're told. But we still had guard duty. We st were still doing Marine stuff. And um, had no idea where, where you're going from there. And um, as it turned out, the, uh, when the uh, Brewster Buffalo Aircraft Squadron was sent up to uh, Midway and was involved in the um, in the battle up there uh, in June of 42, the, um, uh, they lost all the, all the big, clumsy, dumb Brewster Buffaloes. It was a crime to have put a pilot in one of those things. The next thing you know, we're on a, um, a ship that's um, carrying us to, um, we had no idea where we were going, and we really didn't care. We're Marines, we're, and uh, we're, we're going someplace. We don't know what we're going to be doing. Uh, however, our particular assignment was uh, taking care of those aircraft to make sure that they were flight combat ready for the, for the pilot. And um, some of the finest guys you'd ever want to meet in your life were, were those guys. They, um, uh, 
and we ended up on, um, on Guadalcanal. The Marines had landed on August the uh, 7th uh, on the canal in 42, and we came up, uh, the squadron came up sort of piecemeal. Um, our group came up about two and a half to three weeks after the initial landing. The initial landing was unopposed, uh, but by the time that uh, the troops got in there and we started uh, continuing to finish the airstrip that the Japanese had built, was starting to build, we, um, uh, yeah, there had been fireworks. Uh, the Japs wanted that field back and they were doing everything possible to do that. So there was bombing and strafing and shelling and, um, and um, uh, the, the beautiful foresight of some of our military upper echelon. Um, some of the gasoline that we're putting into aircraft, we're pumping, uh, hand pumping out of, out of 50 gallon drums. And uh, it, it could well be contaminated, in which case the pilot's life is at risk. And so um, someone had the foresight to provide chamois so we're filtering this fuel out of the uh, out of the 50-gallon drums into the aircraft through a chamois, and um, it, it's just remarkable the the foresight that some that was given into all the the necessary things to go into a place. They um, they snuck at night. They snuck through a picket a patrol ship out there and um, sunk three American cruisers and one uh, Australian cruiser. Well, uh, when we were just offshore waiting to go, uh, there was a lot of debris that was floating around. And it wasn't until later that we realized what that, where, the, what that, where that debris was from. Did you have some close calls? You mentioned bombing and strafing. I mean, were you hit? Did you have some pretty hairy moments? Oh, yes. Oh, they were all, we had, you, Guadalcanal was 80 miles long, 25 miles wide. And all we had was, it was like a, like a baked potato. And all we had was a little, a little perimeter uh, uh, of about maybe, uh, maybe two, two and a half miles, a perimeter on this whole giant, uh, the biggest island of the Solomons in that chain, the, the top sol uh, southern island. And so it was, and the Japs wanted, uh, they, they were pouring troops and, um, and um, destruction in there, and therefore they put everything, in every force that they could possibly put in there to take us. And um, by the, the grace of God, the, uh, the grunt marines, the most honorable of all the machine gunners and the, uh, and the, uh, our, the, uh, uh, the howitzer uh, guys, they, um, they, they kept that perimeter from being uh, broken and which saved, which was very beneficial to us continuing to operate off the airfield. And you weren't by yourself. You were surrounded by a lot of your uh, fellow, the fellow marines that were probably 10 times more Marine than you were. Proud, though, that you played a role in such a critical battle? Oh, yes, yes. I'm, by the grace of God, I'm, um, I'm happy I, I was exposed to it because it, uh, you don't know at one moment you're going to meet your maker. <laughs>